Hello again, Pisces. Welcome to your reading here on Dove and Serpent Tarot. Please hit the like button, leave a comment, and consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. Now, this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger. And I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I might provide. Remember that the most important part of any tarot reading, Pisces, is you. And there is a Prince of Wands. That's some very, very exciting energy, right? Let's put that into some context and see really what is going on here. Um, interesting. If there's anything that you would like me to pray over or meditate upon or send positive energy toward, please let me know in the comments, okay? Now we're going to finish up with the path of the serpent here. Kind of a, a bit of a contrast here between, between these two paths today. We're going to do our mystery card, bonus card, confirmation card. For that, we're going to use the Waite Smith deck. And this is the card that we are going to randomly select. We're not going to look at this card until the very end of the reading. We'll put the alien right on top. And hopefully that will tie everything together and, you know, give us the confirmation we need at the end of the reading. So uh, I would appreciate it if you'd try to watch this video all the way through. Uh, it helps us out with the algorithm and, well, then we can see the mystery card. So anyway, um, we've got these two major arcana. We've got some air, some water, some earth, some fire, some earth, some water some air and some water. So it's fairly balanced. Um, I think this is a very significant time in your life. I think you're going through something really, really major, major transformation of energy. Okay. Uh, we initially started off with this, um, this Prince of, of Wands, but I think this goes even further back to the Queen of Wands. Okay. This is the Queen of Wands is from the, the past. It's what's behind you. I think that you had um, you had a bit of an awakening in the last oh I don't know maybe the last four to six months. Um, I feel like you've had a an epiphany, an awakening, a realization, something that really uh, triggered this fire energy in you, this intense passion and creativity. Okay. It may or may not have something to do with the maternal energy. Okay. Um, I kind of feel like maybe there is an older feminine energy in your life that is really inspiring to you, or that was really inspiring to you, still is perhaps in some way, whether they have transcended this plane or not. Um, I feel like you, you receive a lot of energy from this person. You really draw a lot of force and fire from them. This could be your higher self, could be your soul. It could be your spirit guide, your guardian angel, God, goddess, deity, universal mind, universal energy, whatever you want to call it. It could be mom, grandma, it could be an older sibling, but I'm getting a very strong, assertive feminine energy. Just very, um, very passionate, very creative, kind of wild, maybe. Um, you know, not always the softest, kindest person, uh, but very inspiring, very powerful. Um, this could, this could ultimately be talking about you being this kind of figure for someone else in your life. Maybe your child, maybe a, a younger sibling or a younger family member. Okay. Because I see some indication that there really is, there's, there's a transition happening. Here's the death card. Not a scary card. Doesn't mean there's any kind of, of, um, death involved in this reading, okay? This is about, more than this is uh, things going away, right? Some, this card can be, we have to grieve, we have to let go of things. More than that, this card is about the rebirth, the reawakening, the resurrection of energy, okay? Because energy is, is not destroyed. It, it's only transformed. It's only moving around, shifting from structure to structure, right? Becoming other things. Um, so I kind of get this feeling like 
especially because we have the younger fire energy here and we have the older fire energy here and the transition between the two or among this here. So I kind of feel like there was a strong feminine energy inspiring powerful person in your life, but now you are becoming that for someone else, right? It's almost like you're transforming. You're kind of being reborn into that role now yourself. I kind of feel like we had a similar reading recently for you, Pisces, where this was this was kind of similar to what's going on. And I wonder if this is maybe a continuation of that, okay? If this is an expansion of that same kind of energy. But I feel like there is, um, it's kind of a double-edged sword. It's kind of a, a mixed blessing here. We have these fours on the top and the bottom here. Four of swords, four of cups. There's almost a reluctance here. There's almost a feeling of um, not wanting the, uh, the emotional intensity of this. Um, let's continue on the horizontal plane because I see the, I see the kind of um, the changing of roles here between the, the older fire energy and the younger fire energy and this death energy. And what we are seeing forward in time, kind of, is the seven of discs. And this is, this is kind of a fear. This is almost a fear of not being enough. This is maybe a fear of not being able to fill these shoes. This is a feeling of really of, of letting maybe this person down, not being strong enough, not having what it takes to really to step into this role to be this, um, this role model, maybe, for this person. Or even if there is not someone in your life that you are a role model for, but this feeling like you're never going to be, you're never going to kind of grow or evolve to the level of whoever this Queen of Wands was for you in your life, that powerful, inspiring figure, that you could never live up to that, right? That's kind of what we see right in front of us. Whether, whether you're now in that role for someone else or not, you feel as if maybe you're always going to be in the, the younger role, right? That you can't, for some reason, you can't evolve and grow to fill those shoes. That you're always going to be the kind of child in the situation, you know, the younger. And that's all just kind of a fear. That's a worry about the future, a fear of failure, a fear of uh, underachieving, of not being adequate, you know, not being able to fulfill the role here, okay? So I feel like that's causing this reluctance. There's this, the, the rationalizing of this. There's the kind of emotional rationalizing um, we're kind of trying to um, justify the way we feel and how we feel is just wanting things to kind of stay the same. It feels okay now and that's okay. You know, it is not wanting this fiery energy because that's going to upset this balance that we have, this structure. It's a self-limiting structure of this water energy, how we feel now. We're just kind of reinforcing that through our, our rationalizing. Not wanting to embrace whatever this fire dynamic is, whatever this fiery transformation is in the middle here. We're trying to kind of keep it contained. We're trying to limit it or distance ourselves from it or avoid it or just somehow maintain our own kind of personal status quo. You know, if it's not broken, don't fix it. Well, it's held together with duct tape and stuff, perhaps, so technically it's still together, but it's just okay, right? The Four of Cups is just, is just okay. Your boat's not sinking, but you're not really sailing anywhere either, you know? There's no party on the boat. It's just, it's just kind of there. It's, it's okay. 
and we're trying to convince ourselves that that's okay. And that's where we, you know, things are things are safe and secure and stable how they are. So I don't need this fire energy. There's too much risk. There's too much fear and anxiety involved in it. There's too much potential for failure, for disappointment, um, that I'd rather just stay here. This isn't the best place to be, the Four of Cups. But it's not the worst either. You know, I'm sure we're all pretty familiar with that. It's not the worst thing. It's not that great, but at least it's not the worst. It's just somewhere kind of in the middle. It's not bad. It's not good. It's it's okay. Um, what we see on the path of the serpent, though, is the night of discs. It's kind of, it's the fire in the earth. It's the night of discs, the fire of earth, right? So it's kind of the inevitable progression here. It's almost the, the choice that's not a choice. It's almost like we, we want to avoid it. We want to rationalize ourselves out of this. But this fire energy and this earth energy is going. And we don't have much of a choice about it. You know. So we're kind of... Um, we're going to be we're going to be thrust into this situation whether we like it or not. And I think that I think that this is going to be good for you. Just based on what we see on the path of the serpent here. I think it's going to be good for you. There's going to be some challenges between accepting the role, right? Taking on this responsibility, whatever it might be, and really enjoying the fruits of it. And getting to that point where we're just like, this is good. I'm happy. Things are flowing nicely. This is, this is better than I could have imagined. This is a really good outcome here. Okay. But there's going to be a little bit of struggle along the way. And this is the hanged man. This is struggle. This is some sacrifice. This is maybe sacrificing that comfortable position that we're in now, this okayness. Maybe sacrificing that for something a little bit more uncertain. There's a good prospect that it's going to end very well. But there's literally no guarantee. Okay. So the hanged man is the somewhat reluctant acceptance of this flow of energy, of this fire earth kind of role, this new, the new shoes that you're trying to fill. You're begrudgingly acquiescing, surrendering to this inevitability, and you're going to go with it. It may not be the most comfortable thing to do at the beginning, but you're going to make it. The, the next card is this Two of Swords. It's in the position of what you don't want. Maybe you don't want to have to choose. Maybe it's better that this is just kind of an, an inevitable thing, an unavoidable um, just, you know, sequence of events. Because you you don't know that you would ever be comfortable making the decision because you, you're rationalizing, you feel, you know that this is just the okayness, but you're, you're rationalizing it. So I feel like you wouldn't, be, you wouldn't be happy with any decision that you made. So it's almost better that you didn't have to make the decision, that this is just how it is. And you've got to you've got to adapt to it, you know. You've got to flow with the current rather than trying to fight against it. And that might be better for you in this instance, because you didn't want to have to choose you didn't want to have to be the one responsible for making the decision, you know. So I think that's why we have a two of swords there in that position. Now that's Six of Cups. The Six of Cups here is the, the perfect outcome, right? What you could aspire to. The, the greatest imaginable result of all of this effort. And this is not guaranteed. This is the, the beauty and the perfection and the harmony that we would wish for we could be satisfied getting a little bit closer to this, right? Because this is, if this is the Four of Cups, and that is 
the okayness. It's not bad, it's not good, it's right in the middle. This is a little bit closer to that perfect goodness, you know? This is um, really feeling happy about, well, I was going to say about the choices, but um, it's not so much about the choice, but about you about you going with the flow of water, right? Going with the current instead of against it. And you're gonna end up in this really, really lovely pool at the end of this water slide, right? It's not gonna be the ideal situation. It's not going to be the best thing ever. It's gonna be pretty good. It's gonna be better than okay, right? Quite a bit better than okay. Um, you're gonna feel a, a joy in this, all right? And I want to emphasize that because this is just, this is a lot of kind of uncertainty, a lot of expectations being put on you, a lot of responsibility. It's going to end well, right? It's going to result in, in a lot of harmony, a lot of joy, and a lot of love. It's not going to be as difficult as you think, okay? But now let's look at that mystery card. Um, I'm a little bit curious about this because seems like this was pretty straightforward. I don't know what the great mystery here might be. You know, I don't know what the big, um, I don't know what the big reveal could be in this. Unless we get a little bit deeper into this water energy and kind of what the results of this uh, could be. No, we've got, interesting, we've got a repeat of the seven of discs, pentacles. So this, again, kind of reinforces this idea that there's a, a lack of confidence here. There is a, a lack of belief in ourselves that we don't think we can do this. That we think that we're going to try, but this thing ain't going to grow. We're going to plant our seeds. We're going to water it, but nothing's going to happen. It's nothing good is going to come from this. We have this, this almost a certainty that we're going to fail, this expectation that we're going to fail at this. And I think this is the bigger, the bigger issue here, more so than um, you know, going with the flow of the water and trying to avoid having to make a decision and just kind of you know, um, begrudgingly participating or accepting this, but there's this underlying feeling that nothing good's gonna come of this, that we're not going to succeed at this. And that, I think, is really what needs to be looked at and, and what we need to consider as this situation evolves, as things progress. Um, maybe ask ourselves, why, do why do we feel this way? Why is, there, why is this seven of discs kind of repeating itself? Why is it that even after all of this energy, the tarot is still, the spirit is still saying, look, there is this expectation now it's not even like an anxiety or a fear of failure it's an expectation that things are not going to go well and that i think is what we need to perhaps meditate upon okay now we're going to go ahead and do an extended reading maybe we can get a little bit deeper into some of that if you want to stick around for the extended just click on the link that's right up there you can have access to all of the extended readings not just for pisces but for all signs um I want to thank you for being here. Thank you for letting me read for you. Please hit the like button. Leave a comment. Consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, this was your, your tarot reading here on Dove and Serpent Tarot.